What's going on guys? Welcome back. My name is Brandon. It's an exciting day today. The enclosed welding trailer is finished. I'm going to show you all the details, including the price of what this costs to build. Stick around. All right guys, let's start this outside. This is a 2018 7 by 16 Neo enclosed trailer. The entire trailer is built from aluminum and everything is built 16 inches on center, including the floor, walls, and roof. And you can see that it's a V nose with a slant top, so it goes this way, plus the V nose. And the roof has actually a bow to it, which is great in our northern climates for snow and ice, it sheds water off. Some of the things that I did at the very beginning is I put all brand new tires on it just to make sure that uh, I didn't have any issues. These are Hercules Strong Guards and the uh, tire place that sold me those said they are equivalent to the Carlisles. Here's a look at the back of the trailer. It's got stabilizer jacks that go down on each side so you can load a motorcycle or whatever for equipment. I got an awesome deal on this trailer because this panel here and these panels here have some dents in them. This trailer is $13,000 new and I paid $6,400 for it. All right, so let's go inside, guys. So we walk in, got a switch right here that turns on all our 12 volt recess lighting and I'm gonna show you everything that this trailer has and everything that it can do. You can see we've got the cabinets all together. Those cabinet doors were powder coated. I fabricated those and those match the toolbox perfectly. Let's start with the power. Come over here, press this latch. This is where the power comes in. When you open the door, a light automatically comes on because it has a little switch right here. So the way this works is power right now is coming up, so shore power. I made this little thing so when the shore power is not used, you can close it down on that and that plugs off the hole. Shore power comes into this and then it goes out and powers up that receptacle right there, that receptacle bank. And it also powers up this NOCO Genius 5. And what that does is this is always maintaining this battery. When we're not on shore power, this battery is automatically charged through the towing vehicle. And everything that's in the trailer is on fuses and everything is labeled. So if something goes wrong, then we know exactly what it is and what it needs to be replaced with. At some point I am gonna put a shelf in here, but I'm holding off because I haven't really loaded the trailer up yet because I don't know quite how I want stuff. So those fine tuning details, I'm gonna leave out until last minute. Under here is a future place to hold a winch. I don't have a winch in there right now. I've just got a scissor jack in case we blow a tire on the trailer, but that's that. And in this one, same thing. When you open up the door, an LED light comes on that's up top. And it turns off when it's closed. These LED lights, I think, are 320 lumens a piece. They're warm white. And this aluminum panel was already here. I just cut the holes in it and mounted all those lights in it. The ceiling I insulated, and I put one inch insulation in that. So more stuff up at the bench. This is just something I picked up at Home Depot and it's got eight receptacles. It tells you that it's protected and grounded and it's got a couple USB ports as well. I also have a couple more USB and these are fast charging ports. Again, everything is fused. It goes down to the battery and it's labeled. This switch right here turns on these. The reason there's a switch here because if this goes into long-term storage, there's an LED light on each of these to let you know they're powered up. This would eventually over a long, long, long period of time drain down a battery. So I wanted to make sure that I could totally de-energize certain things that aren't needed or being used. So basically only turn these on when you're charging something and you can turn them off when you're not using them. I put this plug in the back so that you can get anything that's on your bench down to the underside of the bench and fish it anywhere you need it for a nice clean look on the top. This top isn't completely done yet, guys. What I did was is I used a sheet of three quarter inch melamine board and I'm going to have a sheet of stainless steel bent to go over the top with a small backsplash, like an inch and a half. That way I've got a nice wood surface underneath, but I have a nice clean metal surface 
uh, that, that doesn't get grease and uh, it'll have a good durability for wear. Then again, I haven't done anything with the toolbox. They're just kind of like generally set up inside the toolbox. This is a floor mat. You can kind of see right there. I just took the floor mat, it's about a half inch thick, and cut it to fit the drawers. This is a craftsman tray that I picked up, an organizer. Again, like I said, I don't have this laid out yet because I haven't put everything in it yet. This bottom drawer will stay like this. This is all straps and everything related to this E-Track or tying down stuff. So each one of these cabinets is its own thing. So that's one, that's one, and that's one. Uh, this one holds our motorcycle gear and these have hydraulics on them. And you can see that there's another shelf up inside there. And then this one is just kind of like holding stuff that I'm currently working on right now. And it's got some trash bags and just some miscellaneous things right now. Again, this is going to be a toy hauler and a mobile welding rig. So I don't have everything that I need in it yet. I've got some welding stuff in here. I got a hood, some gloves, a cap, um, just basics in here now. After I mounted all three of these to the wall, then I put some of this angle aluminum on the top. So that way you can just throw stuff up on there, like some chairs or whatever, or a broom, and it just will ride up there. You can see I got a tripod up there. Just, it'll just ride up there okay, like that. And that's held down with uh, bolts and two-sided sticky tape. When I bought the trailer, it didn't come with a spare tire. So what I did was I bought a wheel that matched the trailer wheels that are currently on it. And then when I bought new tires for the trailer, I had them take the best tire from the tires that were on it. And there wasn't anything wrong with it. They were just, they were, this is a 2018 and these tires are from 2018. And uh, I'm going on a 3000 mile trip. So I wanted brand new tires that were good. No particular reason for why the track is mounted the way it is. I just kind of spaced it out the way I wanted to space it out. So I have room. I do know that I'm probably gonna want a couple bottles and the bottles will likely be here. You know, probably have a C25, probably an Argon and probably have oxygen and acetylene as well. The tracks on the floor are for strapping down whatever you need to strap down, like motorcycles. These are recessed floor mount chocks. So you just drive up and your front tire can sit right in that. Same thing over here. Just like that, makes loading and unloading a breeze. Keeps your floor kind of looking neat, you know. The floor I got from Home Depot and this is all one piece and I glued it down. Uh, this is 7 foot by 17 foot. I, I've been waiting to put the cabinets in last because I wanted uh, to have the insides covered as well. So this is all one piece all the way to the front. I really like that feature though, the lights turning off and on. You can see there's the contact switches that do that and that's the light up top. Just a general trash can. So if you work in here, you got rubber gloves or whatever, you can clean up after yourself. That's a little buddy heater. That will maintain this trailer at 70 degrees when it's, you know, negative zero out. This right here, what this is, is just for basically convenience, for grabbing stuff that you use all the time. It has a little workbench here. You can put chemicals in there, but this will be the stuff that you use all the time. I'll probably have like MIG wire, just all kinds of um, various things here that you want to reach and get to easily and quickly. One other thing I wanted to show you too is that when I laid these out, I wanted to make sure that they didn't get damaged. So you can see I put a rubber stop right there so the doors don't get uh, all dinged up. And I did the same thing here. So if these jackets aren't right here like it is now, these will contact that stop down there. The walls were already plywooded when I bought the trailer and somebody had already painted it. So all I had to do is go to Sherwin-Williams and I bought some really nice paint and uh, painted the walls. The tailgate is not done either. I'm gonna do this in black, but like I said, in about two or three days, I'm leaving for a 3000 mile trip with this trailer. So I'm kind of got everything just as done as done can be. So it's almost 100%. But this I want to do in black, same thing as this, but black. 
and then it's going to have that same aluminum trim strip that I put down there around the perimeter of this. So basically like, like your house, how you'd have an accent wall in your house, that's kind of how this trailer will look. So you'll have gray and black, you know, that's kind of the theme, and then that will be black with the aluminum trim around it. I think it's going to look really good because it'll kind of tie in that whole cabinet theme up there. I also bought a portable chemical toilet. I think it's called Thetford. It's a cassette toilet. So that way if you're on a long trip with kids or whatever, or you're caught in traffic and they've got to use the bathroom and it's an emergency, it's going to be back here, supposedly really slick. So it's just going to sit here, kind of be strapped to the wall. This right here is actually a um, clothesline. So it goes across. It hooks into this receptacle right here and I'm putting a shower curtain on this just so you have a little bit of privacy. So when you're sitting back in here doing your business, if somebody opens up the trailer and needs to do something, you're just kind of not sitting out there in the open. Uh, another added benefit of this would be uh, like when you go to a hotel and you're going swimming, uh, you take your wet clothes and you can just kind of hang them up here when you go down the road and uh, your clothes will dry as you go to your next destination. It's got good ventilation because it's got factory vents here. It's also got a vent here, but you want to keep this closed when you're in transport. And it's also got another vent right here. This camera right here is pretty slick. This is a Halo View, part of the BT-7. What this is, is that this will monitor the cargo inside the trailer as you're going down the road. And in a recent episode, I also mounted another camera at the back of the trailer facing backwards. So when you're backing up, you can see behind you. And I also have an LED that turns on when you put the vehicle in reverse to shine in behind you so you can see real good as well. And this is another one of those things that you don't want this necessarily running all the time. So I come over here and you can see I've got this right here it says camera. When you turn that on, that red light turns on. And now you can see, see the little blue indicators up in there? That is a sensor that automatically will turn on lights right here when it gets uh, dark. If you want to, you don't have to have them come on. These will turn on when it gets dark to help light up in behind you. And you can also change and turn that off and on from the display. And I'm gonna show you how that works right now. All right, so now I'm in my truck. It's a 2018 F-150. Uh, it's got the 3.5 EcoBoost. I think it has like, um, I don't know, maybe like 13,000 towing capacity. So it'll easily tow this trailer. All right, so this is the monitor. It's a seven inch color monitor. And uh, let me put the truck in reverse. Look at that. You can see I'm not connected to the trailer at all. The, the ball's not on the truck. There's no wires, nothing, okay? So I'm back in park, and the way this works, you can just turn on your monitor, and I turn the cameras on in the trailer. Remember, the, the cameras are currently on. That's behind me right now. That's what that sees, okay? These also have sound as well. It's probably hard to see, but right up here, there's a yellow uh, speaker with an X through it. I have the sound off. I don't need to hear, you know, the, behind me. If I press this button here once, that's gonna go to a split screen, press it again. It's gonna be inside the cargo box. So that's inside the trailer right now. And that's, that's real time. That's what you see inside the trailer. We'll go close the door and I'll show you a couple other things. So up here again, you can see it's, the light is on, so it's set for auto. The speaker is off. And I will tell you that, you know, driving down the road 10 o'clock at night, that's how bright it is inside that trailer. It's just like that going down the road. It is incredible. So let's say, you know, you want to monitor both. The way I have this wired up is that the backup camera is always on. So it's always, as long as the switch inside the trailer is on, it's doing something. This also has an SD card that it can continuously record. And this here right here is a sensor. And when it starts getting dark, what that does is that'll 
illuminate, I don't know if you can see them, these buttons along the side, these will light up. Kind of like how that one is illuminated green, it'll light all these up as well. So if you want to watch two things, let's say you want, you can have up to eight cameras with this too, by the way. If you want to watch both cameras, just hit it again. There's the back camera. And now that'll be split screen. So that's channel three and channel four. So the inside cargo is there and the backup is there. But I want to show you something. Supposedly this will do like 970 feet in distance and I know it will. Okay, so there's the inside of the trailer. Okay, you see where I am right now? So you can kind of see both. Look, I'm gonna pull ahead. Make sure I don't run over my dog. Okay, yeah, she's good. I'll show you the trailer here. So we're still looking inside the trailer, okay? Now I'm gonna put the truck in reverse and you can look at my reverse screen. Look how far back the trailer is. The trailer is like right there. This is an incredible system, guys. Now, the reason I am I wanted this system, and I don't know as if I mentioned it in the episode where I installed the camera, is that a few years ago, I had just finished building my wife's XR100, and I'll have a link to that video over on my Motivated channel. And uh, I was driving down the road, and the strap came loose, and the motorcycle was on its side, and I drove for probably a half an hour, not even knowing that the motorcycle was on its side, and it did all kinds of damage to the motorcycle. So this right here, if something goes wrong in the trailer, you can monitor it real time, easily, and you'll know. You just look back, and you can see if, if your load looks good, or if your motorcycle's on its side, or whatever. So it's a good peace of mind. Plus, again, when you're backing up the trailer, you can see everything behind you, and you can adjust all these grid lines there's all kinds of things you can do to custom tailor it to your needs all right guys so now the part that you want to know about and that is cost what do things cost the price of the trailer like i said i got a super good deal on it this trailer new with none of the stuff inside just basically bare bones and again it's got the added height inside it's got a curved roof and the floor, walls, and ceiling are all built 16 inches on center, and the entire trailer is built of aluminum. The price of this trailer new is right around $13,000. A lot of money, but if you take care of it, it's gonna last a long time. That's not what I paid for it. I paid $6,400. And that's because it has dents on this side of the trailer. If you can live with that, great. Added bonus, if you can't, well, guessing I'll probably have another $600 in this if I can't live with it to replace these panels. So already I'm in this for half price of a new trailer. If you were to order this trailer from the factory doing everything that this is and how this is set up right now, this trailer is going to run you right around $20,000. Here's what we have in it. I got in total $2,617 above the price that I paid. So everything that I have is $9,017 into this trailer. And like I said, the trailer is valued right around to replace it 20,000. So less than half price. So I feel very fortunate. That's why it's not such a big deal for me to spend $2,600 on this because the value that I'm getting for what I put into it is a lot. So the paint, that was crazy expensive. You guys know the story behind that. They wanted over $100. So $78 for paint. Got the flooring at Home Depot, that was $339. The glue that they recommend for it was $33. The wiring, so that's wire connectors, all of the switches and everything, 100 bucks. The hardboard, the white melamine on the ceiling, I got that from Home Depot, $72. In the insulation, I also got it Home Depot, that was $88. The black wall cabinets, those are $110 a piece. So $330 for all three of them. And I got those on Amazon and those are made by Vivor. They sell a whole bunch of stuff. I just love how these work. They're, they're a real good cabinet. They're not like industrial grade, but they're good. They're good enough for what I need it for. The aluminum wall cabinet, $159. I also got that on Amazon. That's this cabinet right here. and. That's through Prairie View Industries. They were just selling it on Amazon. 
The screws, the specialty screws, were $60. I got all of those on eBay. And that's like these special screws here, these white ones. Then I bought the black ones for the E-Track, and then the silver ones for where it goes into the bare aluminum. The Halo View system, that's more of a comfort thing. So that's $359 plus the other camera. The second camera is another 100 bucks. Amazon. And the aluminum cabinets and powder coating, 600. And if you remember, I had to buy a whole sheet of aluminum to do this, but I didn't figure all of that. That's just what I have in this cabinet. So 600 bucks for all of this. And I got $300 in E-Track. And again, it doesn't include the $600 that I replaced the tires. That's something that you just have to do anyways. Like I said, this trailer is a 2018 and it's now 2023. They were the original tires. And they were in okay shape, but nothing I would want to travel 3,000 miles on. I wanted brand new tires that were good quality, high quality tire. And these aren't a load range E, and I did that for a reason. They're a load range D, but these are really high speed rated. I think these are for 86 miles an hour. Because this trailer is so light, I didn't want this trailer when it's empty riding like a dump truck. So that's why I didn't get load rated E tires. It's not necessary for this. It would be way overkill and this trailer would ride like trash. These are Hercules Strong Guard tires. And uh, like I said, the lady that she used to haul horses in and she'd haul them cross country and back. And she said she had these tires on her trailer and this same lady works at the tire company that sold me these tires. So she recommended these. She said she uses them for her business. Absolutely loves them and uh, swears by them. So I bought these based on her recommendation and she said they're just like Carlisle tires, same equivalent. Carlisle's a real good tire. U-Haul uses uh, Carlisle tires on their trailers. So if it's good enough for U-Haul, you know they're probably a good tire. And this lady said that these are real good too. So we'll see. All I got left to do now is I just gotta start loading this up. But like I said, I don't know exactly what I wanna put in it. I've got a few little minor details, nothing serious to get this completely dialed in. But we're gonna be doing a 3,000 mile road trip. We're throwing a couple bikes in it. And then when I get back, I'm gonna put all my welding equipment in it. And we're gonna start doing some mobile welding jobs out of this. Make sure you stick around next week because I got a mobile welding job that we're gonna be doing. I hope you guys enjoyed this series. I really enjoyed doing it. I'm really proud of what I've accomplished here and what I've created. I've, like I said, I've got $9,000 in this whole project. This completed trailer is still way less than you could buy a bare bones strip trailer for. And I am so happy with the ultimate results. Until next week, guys, I will see you then. Take care, stay safe, new videos every Friday. Until then, God bless. See ya.